Sound love. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Um, I've got a lot of digital love for this. Oh, my God. Thank you very much for joining this episode of Film Club. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Harris, and who's a little bit disappointed right now, but I'll tell you what, it was worth it, because to my right, as always, it's Andy Donaldson. Yeah, um, you were looking for a pun there, Stephen. Every single week in Film Club, we invite you along to watch a film with us. We dive into some of cinema's best before coming back here to talk it out. Andy, this week we looked at a unique angle on cinema. I was going to say, one of cinema's best. This is... Um... Interstellar 55. Five, five. It's actually Interstellar 4-5, otherwise known as um, the five Tory of the five Ecret, five Tar, five Stem. Whoa, hang on, you have to explain that. What's all this? The five Tory of the five Ecret, five Tar, five Stem. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, okay, I get you. <laughs> right, that's the title. It's a collaboration of Daft Punk, uh, the Discovery album, alongside um, kind of animator, director, um, I'm going to mispronounce this so badly, Leiji uh, Matsumoto and a few other uh, collaborators that we'll come into a second and uh, create this visual story, um, animated story of um, the album Discovery uh, through each song is its own kind of like um, story, like subplot uh, chapter in the mm. in the film. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, well, basically it's just, it's a story of a, a band on another planet that get abducted, come onto Earth there's a horrible kind of CD uh, record producer that kind of like brainwashes them, makes them look human, uh, sells loads of singles, and he's got a, a plan. And then there's a, a super duper guy who is the kind of like potential lover of one of the band who comes and saves him, and then they go back to the planet. Um, what I've never seen this before. Okay, but you'd seen some of the videos? Uh, on YouTube, yes. I've seen it. I've never put it two and two together. It's like when we did what we did uh, doing the shadows. I've seen a lot of it on YouTube, never chronologically so for somebody who doesn't know what this is basically when daft punk were making discovery yeah apparently in the middle of the production process they were like got an idea yeah what we're going to do is we're going to make a music video for every single one of the tracks on the discovery album when you click them all together you get a feature yep. film yeah essentially um so it's the two two lads in there daft punk uh, Guy Man Manuel de Homo Cristo and Thomas Bangalter. And it's, Christ, I want to mess up here. Uh, it's the other guy who does all like the getting you know, all the Daft Punk, the robots and everything like that, the visual style of Daft Punk and everything like that. It was him mm. that brought it all together. I'll get his name in a second. And um, uh, Cedric H Herbert, sorry, that's the guy. And uh, the, yeah, they came together um, with a collaborator, Leiji Massimoto, and a few others. And they said, Do you fancy doing this? Now, this guy, I didn't really know of him. Up until I actually read into him today, and he's the guy that like kind of that that the coined the majority of the the anime genre what it is today. You look at Akira, which is heavily referenced mm -hmm. in like you know loads of like kind of a lot of anime is referenced off that eighties um, kind of stuff. And obviously he's he's come further and he's like influenced so many more. Yeah. Um, the other, yeah. There's a couple of other um, people that are in in this as well. Uh, Daisuke Nishiro, um, who is like the, one of the creative the directors of um, Dragon Ball Z. Which yeah. obviously you can see so much in this animation, mm. like, and I, I, I couldn't see. It. I, I always saw it before, and I was like, so familiar, so familiar, in like the style and everything. You know, the guys that look like um, Goku, and you have got the guys that look like Krillin. Do you know what I mean? Like the two different kind of types. And I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Um, on the subject of that style of animation as well, I think given where Daft Punk were at the time, like they were on their second album. Yeah, it's impressive for them to go out there and say, get this. They weren't like they weren't huge. Mm. They, I mean, uh, um, Human After All. No, um, uh, homework. Homework, thank you. Had done really well. Mm -hmm. But to get a, a feature length animation produced for your music, for your album, is crazy expensive. Yep, yep. And apparently it was so expensive that the uh, studio turned around and said, no, like we're not paying for it. That's crazy. You, you can't have us pay for a music video for every single track on your album. Because traditionally, you know, you'd take two, maybe yeah, three yeah, tracks yeah. from an album, put a music video on it. To like, no, we're not doing it. Um, so supposedly Daft Punk just went, all right, we'll pay for it. <laughs> and then just paid for the rest of it themselves. Which is brilliant, by the way. Like, And they've done that again. I was reading about, it went, as you can tell, a bit of a Daft Punk marathon. Um, stuff I hadn't on and on. And it was about random access memories. Later on in the career, they come out with, I said last week, this masterpiece of an album. Yep. Um, and obviously that was heavily expensive because I didn't realize this, but they actually recorded each song. Uh, strings, but they pay for that themselves as well. You're talking yeah. like about a million. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Same thing happened when they played um, Coachella as well. They oh, went all that, like, way over theirs. budget and paid for the, all themselves. Love Daft Punk. I, <laughs> like, it's just a testament to them as, a, as, a, as an artist. They clearly have a vision for something yeah. and they don't want to let financial difficulties get in the way of that yeah, yeah, decision. Yeah. Um, and I think here it really pays off because this could have gone 
so south so quickly and it could look cheap but it doesn't oh it looks God, no. really good it's i don't understand right okay. I, i'm just gonna go straight into it so i had a couple of notes I'm gobsmacked at the fluidity of the animation and how it goes from song to song and utilizes certain areas of the song and certain kind of like Easter eggs inside the band themselves or like that the kind of like the, 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 his, his uh, animation from the past and they utilize that together to make this incredibly artistic uh, video that has a story with pretty much obviously without the lyrics of the album, like no, no dialogue and yet convey emotion in such a way that you can actually like feel a part of the characters. I mean, I, my God, I felt more of these these kind of characters than I did Tron Legacy. Yeah, oh um, yeah. And like, this is a perfect example of how unnecessary dialogue can be. Mm. Like, dialogue should always be that cherry on top, the thing that's a nice little, nice little bit of flavor. And instead, people often use it as a crutch. Uh, Taking it out of account, Christopher Nolan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He did so well with Dunkirk. Um, and then here, they just strip it all out. They pull it back to the, to the bare necessities. Now, I think maybe one weak element for it is that the story is a little bit, like, predictable in some sense. It's very much good versus evil, you know, bad corporation okay, versus... Okay, I, I, you know. I can get that because it's a homage to an artist, artistry. Yeah, so I think the caveat, though, is that although there's some predictable elements to the uh, thematic value of it, mm. it also does try to actually incorporate some other thematic value. There's a whole thing about, like, cultural appropriation going on. It's them making this commentary on like the music industry and how the music music industry works. Yeah. And like presumably there must have been some involvement it's, from people who actually it's have It's not a full commentary. That. It's just a partial. It's just, just like, you know, they bit. can be like that. Yeah, yeah. Look, look what we've done so these artists. It's not like they just went for a good versus yeah, yeah. evil story. Yeah, they yeah. actually tried to give it a little element of depth. But it's it's great, like, in terms of the animation as well and how like they combine it with the songs. Like uh, it's something as so simple as having a four piece group. What's so special about having a four-piece group? Well, generic kind of like Western music that Def Punk falls into is you normally have like a four-beat system, a four-four um, time signature, and normally four bars. It's kind of like the normal, especially for like kind of house music, dance music that Daft Punk tend to do. So obviously you're gonna have four members. So if you look at the actual scene itself, when Harder, Better, Faster, Strong comes on, and you look at the way that the robot to come in, it's all to the beat, but it's all like there's a rhythm of going around the four of them, and the next one as each bar goes along like this, and it's just it's simple things like that that fucking work really well, and it's just like. Well played, well played. That was that was thought out there. Yep, um, yep. That, that really works. And I think it can be so difficult to sometimes make like a, a feature film cut to music consistently like that. Now, they do something that's really clever, I think, which is they don't rely on that throughout. Well, but, they, but they're having lovely little, little moments. Like there's a, there's a scene in uh, Crescent Dolls where obviously they're getting big like this and it's on about like the music. It's, it's been a massive hit. It's getting played everywhere. Mm. Hit one more time. That's really good. And there's a, there's a DJ stab in the actual song itself. So what actually happens is the way that they're on about the rise to music is on about a DJ is playing the music because it's so popular. And that's when they include the DJ stab. And I was like, little things like that. It's a DJ stamp. A stab. So like What's a, a DJ? Like oh, like when you like shake a record. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, it's just little things like that. Um... And obviously, like their their own internal kind of thing, like the little cultural um, just last bit of notes. I'll whittle out. Is um, obviously you have like Daft Punk feature themselves in like their 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 kind of like version of the Grammy Awards. Um, and I love that little scene. I was laughing me and I haven't seen that before. And then obviously you have like France versus Japan, which are the you know the two main collaborators of this uh, countries, and they're having a football match. And it's like that's when people come together to like kind of think. You oh, might not I, understand I didn't that click on that. Yeah, it's, just, it's just really cool. Like France versus Japan, it's like football. It's like a little bit of rivalry, but also collaborate. I don't know. I thought it was really cool. Um, that is quite was, cool. I, yeah. that, that totally went over my head. Well, yeah. I have to say, I prefer, I know we did Tron Legacy last week, I prefer this type of cameo for Daft Punk than the one in Tron Legacy. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit more subtle. This, this, yeah, this, this, this was quicker, it was over and done with. Yeah, you, yeah. You, can, you, could, you could watch this without understanding that you're looking at the artist in there as exactly, well. Exactly. I think it worked a little better for me. Yeah. Um, one thing that really worried me at first, right? Uh, the first track on the album it's is... not lip synced. Is... Uh, no, that, that didn't worry me so much. Um, I, I, it's one more I, I time, yeah. but the whole track is basically the concert, yeah? Yep. It's them playing at the concert. And I was worried every song was just going to be like one little scene. It was all going to be like this, because it's a lot of them just like standing around and posing with guitars and stuff. I'm like, I thought every song was just going to be like a little sort of tonal moment. Okay. And then I was like, I was yeah. in there like, oh no, am I in for an hour of like just, here's four minutes, here's four minutes, here's four minutes. And it doesn't. No. It could have so easily been, and it, but it still manages to have its own identity within each song, but still flow within one cohesive The fluidity whole. of this is incredible. Like, that's what blew me away the most, as mentioned. 
Um, but I like how he referenced at the start how the, all, everyone's dancing the music. That you know, that's people like Daft Punk. You fucking dance the music. But it goes, sorry, stomach. It goes full circle where you, you know you got one more time at the start where everyone's dancing away. They go back to the planet too long at the end. Mm-hmm. And everyone's dancing away, and obviously that gets transmitted to Earth. And like the music's, you know, it's it's grown. It's yeah. just. It's it's amazing. Like also the fact they didn't go for like this sort of happy Disney style ending. Instead, it does have a slightly grayer shade at the end. Yeah, with the yeah. dude that they, you don't get like, oh, he's magically revived. It is sort of like this dude died. Let's just honor his legacy and, and move on. Yeah, it has that nice sort of. Um, and how how fitting are those kind of like those moments with the music. Like, I, I, I realize that's such a bland statement considering we're doing a fucking this kind of like kind of film. But how fitting are some of those? Like one of my favorite ones is I think it's called uh, Nightfall. Um, when the night falls. Interesting. It's um, night vision. Sorry, not nightfall. Night vision, and it's where um, obviously it's grim, and you see the d- dingy streets, and they've got the rain or, like all going off. Because they only they use quite minimal sound effects in this, but they use it to fucking well effect. And it's night uh, night vision, and obviously it's like grimy. And that it's when he's in the in the in the streets, and it's like what's his name? Um, they're they're kind of like the the hero, the superhero. Because obviously he comes in, it's superheroes brought in. It's amazing. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's like little things like that that convey the mood. Um, again, to go back on your know, third song, Digital Love, and it's how like the lyrics go on about having this like lovely dream and you see him going to this dream, which fits, it fits the narrative so perfectly because yeah. it reverts back later on where she has this dream, which is their final farewell, which again, when I have that final farewell, I think it's it's um, something about us, again, lyrically fits the scene. And then I have this moment where the lyrics come together and it goes back to that dream sequence. And then he's he's gone with this amazing shot of um of the band and him in the background. It's just I'm it's it's it's, it's a testament to both Daft Punk and is it Le, Leisure Matsumoto? Um because I, I read somewhere today there's I think it was Pitchfox my article. It's about like all the animations combine, all the characters like little iterations of his previous characters and previous films. I wouldn't yeah. know that. Someone let me know in the comments below because it might be like someone a really, really avid fan. Um and I just it comes together and it's it blew me away. Uh, I knew it was going to be good. I knew because I've heard good things. I knew it was going to be good. I've seen that on YouTube. But put it together, context, and the fluidity of it, I was just gobsmacked. I am I still am gobsmacked. I don't even right. can tell. And I had this little sort of bit of personal gratification as well because I remember this album coming out like back when we were kids mm. and you'd catch like some of these uh, music videos on like MTV or whatever ridiculous music channel we were watching at the time. And you'd see like a cool looking music video and then, you know, another one would come on and you'd forget about it. And then maybe a couple of days later, you'd see like another one and you might recognize that like some of the characters were the same and you'd go, oh, they've made like some sort of like reference or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I always found it a little odd that the stories always ended in the middle of the story. It never <laughs> had like a resolution. Um, and I had no idea it was supposed to be this, this feature length thing. And years later to find out that that's what it was. And I, I suddenly went, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> then to sit down and watch it, you go... That makes sense. And holy crap, you did that basically as well as you could do. Yeah, 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 yeah. You it's, knocked it's, it out of the park. It's interesting you've gone about being a kid because I love the ending to this film, how it's just a record going round and round because the universe comes out to yep. this record. It's all in the kid's imagination. He's got the dolls around. Yeah. Or is it sort of thing? I think it's a perfectly fitting end to the, the film. Yeah. I was just, that's what I mean. Gratification throughout. Like, it, it couldn't have done it any better. Excellent. Just... Well done. Um, but there is Interstellar 555, or whatever it was you called the five it. Five of the five Ecrit, five tar, five stem. You can let us know in the comments below what you thought of that, or you can hit us up on Twitter. But Andy and I are going to be back once again next week where we take a look in honor of Parasite Snowpiercer. You either love it or you hate it. I can't wait. Until then, though, get watching. Bye.